So with that, um, you know, we're going to get started today. I want to introduce our speakers. We've all we've got basically everyone um, on the panel. We'll make sure Dwight gets uh, his video on shortly. And so um, today you're going to hear from Matt Conger, who is our director of ecosystem alliances, also covers our business development in Southeast US and Latin America. Dwight, of course, is our founder and CTO. We have Jared, who's our director of software. He's not going to be presenting during the deck, but he's available um, and might be able to answer some of your questions in the Q&A box. So feel free to um, do that. You might see him or I kind of messaging you back or giving some context if we have those answers. Andrew, director of hardware engineering, also leads our Igor universities, and you've probably seen him if you've joined any of our past webinars. And of course, we've got Jack, who's VP of technical services um, and really someone, if you are installing our technology, you probably know Jack. So with that, just remember, put your questions in the Q&A box, upvote if you can. Um, and then really, I'm going to turn it over. We're going to hear first from Matt. Um, I'll disappear and, and, and really let the show get started because we've got some interesting stuff for you today. Awesome. Thank you, Kim. Sorry, guys. All right. Um, germs are present, present both in the air and on virtually any surface. Those might include things like salmonella, which is usually associated with food preparation, harmful bacteria such as C. diff and MRSA linked to hospital acquired infections, and viruses like H1N1 at work, in transit, and where people connect with one another. Next slide, please. The presence of bacteria, viruses, and fungi can lead to outbreaks in facilities such as schools, exam rooms, food processing environments, pharmacies, offices, athletic facilities, and more. Responsible companies are looking for safe, chemical-free disinfection solutions that can be easily deployed and automated at an affordable price. Companies need customers, employees, and occupants to feel safe. So with that, Igor introduces the first fully automated power Ethernet disinfection system that is integrated into LED lighting. Igor's disinfection solution is part of a multi-layered approach for creating a healthier work environment. You may already be suggesting masks, encouraging social distancing, and dispersing hand sanitizer for your business. These are all important steps to take. Any one of these tools within the hierarchy can be effective, but a complete response will deliver the best results. Our solution is part of the engineering controls for the space. It provides the safety and automated controls needed to use UVC lighting for disinfection. And so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Dwight Stewart. Thank you, Matt. Uh, this is a very exciting moment in our company where we have been creating a power over ethernet technology platform for many years now. And we are now taking those parts and pieces and constructing sets of solutions. And those particular solutions uh, are solving very specific problems. And so this being one of uh, those that are, you know, we're now debuting, which very excited to be solving an immediate problem in this world and uh, disinfecting spaces that are, you know, that we all share on a common basis. And particularly within indoor spaces, uh, this is a very specific problem that is immediate and uh, really the most potent situation where you can cross uh, contaminate and uh, infect one another is in indoor spaces and shared spaces. And so that's what we're really focusing on here. So our technology stack is comprised of really three different elements. Uh, one is our uh, power over ethernet node, which you can connect a number of sensors, lights, actuators, things like uh, everyday devices. Uh, the UVC lighting is part of the equation here. And so that's a, a more of a unique part that we'll get into here later. Uh, but other than that, it's really taking these parts and pieces that already exist, putting them onto our technology platform that already exists, and forming the solution. So once those devices are on the power over ethernet node, now they can be exposed onto the software and the software creates automations. 
and can also collect data so that the, it, the processes can be validated. But it's by using Power over Ethernet, it's as simple as a plug and play, you know, quick connect Ethernet, which is typical of voice over IP phones, IP cameras, and so many other devices can be installed by IP in the, uh, the IT staff within your buildings or the, the large ecosystem of IT staff that exists. So it becomes a very kitted solution and Jack will talk about this at more at length uh, here soon. But by doing that, uh, it really becomes this turnkey solution where the whole premise is this is easy, it's simple, it's predefined similar to when you buy Legos, you can buy all the parts and pieces uh, so that you can build whatever you want, but how many people are master builders? You know, it's not, not that many people have, want to spend that kind of effort. They just want a kit, they just want to build that X-Wing fighter, they just want to build whatever it is that's on the front of the box and just uh, follow the directions and it's done. Uh, so we're taking that approach by making this as you know incredibly simple and straightforward as possible so you get the result that you're expecting so with our this process we use door sensors we use motion sensors we use people counting all to verify that people are not in the room and then also by creating the kid solution we can define it for very specific rooms so if we go to the next slide once you have those parts and pieces installed into the room, then it becomes how does the software utilize those actuators and, and those sensors and that light uh, and other disinfecting uh, devices to automate that process and verify that it's occurred. So the sanitization cycles uh, with UVC lighting, there is a, a certain exposure time that's required from the UVC light to make sure that the process was effective. Uh, that depends on the light that's used. And, and the, um, so based on the light and the amount of area that it's, um, that it's uh, blanketing and illuminating, uh, that, that, would depend, that would affect the amount of time at which the exposure needs to take place. So with the lights that um, we're currently using, it is about 90% decontamination for every 20 minutes, and you can get 99.9% .9 decontamination after about 80 minutes. So that there's a, a certain um, progression to that, and um, we can go further into that uh, through Q&A and later in the presentation. Uh, the room is then enforced in its vacancy through all those different sensors that I talked about earlier, and depending on your circumstances, we can you know, tie into existing sensors that you may have in your facilities. Let's say you've already deployed people counting. Let's say you've already deployed some other sensors. We can also tie into those to utilize the most of your investment that you've already made. Also scheduling where, let's say in offices, you want to decontaminate your space between meetings, but, and there's a process for that, which I'll go into momentarily but also to be able to schedule it on a nightly basis that you do it more of a deep cleaning and a longer exposure. So between meetings makes sense that you can do more of a maintenance mode where you're taking care of 90%, 99% of the pathogens, but then on a nightly basis, you really wanna do a deeper clean uh, so that certain, for instance, COVID-19 can last days in some situations, depending on the surface uh, material that it's sitting on. And then the data becomes, uh, or sorry, the visual indicators are also very important. Uh, UVC is, is um, actually an invisible light. You know, it's outside the visible spectrum. So using other indicators, so one of the things that we're doing is using a blue or purple light to indicate that the system is operating uh, and go through a process that lets people know uh, the system's about to start. UVC does have some... Um, negative health impacts. Uh, the, the health impacts are, uh, and we can go into this uh, further later, but they're not as damaging as UVA and UVB. It's not going to be harmful to you immediately. It, it does take some exposure time, so, but it's just good to minimize the amount of exposure that you have. So using visual indicators such as the purple light, uh, having them turn on, doing a countdown, what, as the system is preparing to start. So it gives everyone time to know, hey, the system's going to start. 
and then having those lights on and showing through touchscreen interfaces and things that we are indeed cleaning and that uh, you need to be out of that room. So, and, and then really the data becomes a major component of this as well, because as you, you can see how important it is to be proactive and to prove in, in many cases to your employees, to anyone that may doubt that you're, you're taking measures um, and, and you know, whether it's through litigation or otherwise, that you are indeed doing these actions, taking actions to reduce uh, the, the effects of COVID. And even beyond COVID, uh, there's plenty of other things that, as Matt was talking about earlier, just even the common flu, that it also is affecting productivity in the billions of dollars every year. So things that you can do to mitigate that and just verify that you're taking, that it's working as expected and uh, is that operation is taking place will, will be very important. And then even beyond COVID-19, so once again, the disinfection uh, for those other types of viruses and pathogens for uh, how it really negatively impacts productivity in general. And then when the infrastructure is in place for Igor, that can be leveraged for so many other applications, whether it's, uh, we're also implementing with people counting uh, sensors that can tell how many people are in that room. And now there's maximum, uh, maximum occupancy rates and limitations that people are enforcing so that even though it's a six person conference room, you really only want three people in there. So how can you uh, use that information with people counting sensors and then alert, you, you know, flash the lights, notify on the touch screens, those kind of things, create a full experience. Uh, and that's just another way that it provides with the exact same infrastructure, the exact same technology set and platform can be extended uh, with just adding another end device to uh, nodes that are already deployed and using the interfaces uh, that can convey information, whether it's the lights themselves or the uh, touch screens to be able to let people know some feedback and, and uh, actionable information. Next slide. So we also, even though there's a lot there that I just explained and, and there's a lot more uh, as to the sequence of operations and how this all works, we are making this as just dumb simple as it possibly can be uh, to the point where it seems like it's just like a dishwasher. You know, you, you have this touch screen uh, outside and inside of your door and when you walk up to a conference room, for instance, you have an option to disinfect. Uh, and when you press that button, it goes through a countdown. It starts disinfecting, it tells you how much time is left. So it's going through a countdown. And then once it's done disinfecting, it tells you it's clean. You know, it's simple as one, two, three, literally. And if at any point in time you open the door, you go into the conference room, it detects motion, anything like that, then it just reverts back to the original screen of disinfect. So it's a very simple uh, process. Also, you know, one of, so we're, try, we're creating these kits that are deployed within classrooms and huddle rooms and conference rooms and so forth that are very well defined. They, they're a defined space with a door, but we are also uh, looking at open spaces where then using adjacent motion sensors beyond those spaces, we can know if someone's even approaching that open space and, and also uh, stop the decontamination or, or some disinfection. So those are the things that uh, we're doing from a user experience perspective, just once again, making the install turnkey and simple, and from a user experience, turnkey and simple, and then also being able to schedule it uh, on a nightly basis or whenever the facility is not being used. And now I'll hand it off to Andrew. All right, thank you, Dwight. I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about the components that make up the disinfection solution. Um, as we can see on this slide, uh, the, the top center uh, picture uh, is an example of the, uh, the UVC fixture. Uh, you can see it's in a standard two by two tropper uh, form factor. Um, so that allows for easy installation into a, a typical ceiling grid and in, in say a uh, office environment or classroom. Um, we have uh, implemented some special glass in the fixture, which allows the UVC 
uh, to pass through that without being attenuated. Um, and, uh, you know, as Dwight mentioned, since UVC light is not visible to the human eye, uh, we've also added uh, purple uh, LEDs uh, to these fixtures so that we can give some visual indication uh, when the disinfection cycle is, is occurring. Um, and down in the lower right of this, this picture uh, is uh, an example of the, the UVC diode itself, kind of a cool uh, close-up of, of what it actually looks like. So uh, with that, we'll uh, go on to the next slide. We've got, uh, uh, we do have a, a data sheet on the UVC fixtures with uh, more information um, that'll be available after the webinar. Um, but as I mentioned, standard two by two foot troffer uh, fixture. Uh, this is a uh, Igor enabled fixture. So it utilizes our Igor PoE lighting nodes uh, to, to drive the fixture uh, around a 52 watt power draw per fixture. Uh, the, the coverage area of the UVC light is a 17 foot diameter at the floor level when the fixture is mounted at a nine foot height. Um, and we have a table in that data sheet that indicates uh, how that diameter changes and the uh, different disinfection, the recommended disinfection times based upon different mounting heights. Um, the particular uh, UVC diodes we're uh, using, um, do we emit in the 260 to 270 nanometer range for uh, ideal, um, uh, you know, germicide uh, elimination, and um, based upon the uh, the nine foot uh, mounting height, uh, typically a, a ninety minute continuous disinfection cycle per day is recommended. Uh, and so, with that, we'll move on to the next slide and, and look at some of the other components of the system. So, in the uh, top right here, um, we have our Igor Gateway server, uh, which is really the brains uh, behind the whole whole system. That's uh, that runs, uh, runs everything, uh, collects all the inputs, and makes the decisions on when it's uh, safe to initiate a disinfection cycle or if, if one needs to be stopped uh, in the middle. Uh, I, a, an example of a PoE network switch, um, we'd uh, typically be uh, recommending or providing a uh, 60 watt or above uh, per port uh, PoE switch for this solution. Um, to the left of that, we have a, a couple of uh, simple uh, sensor examples, uh, door contact closure and a typical PIR or dual tech motion sensor. Uh, again, these are, are used for detection of uh, anybody in the room or entering the room in order to uh, stop a disinfection cycle if that were to occur. Uh, below that, we have a couple of, ex of examples of our Igor PoE nodes. Um, our uh, 60 watt Rev5 node is, is the, the black kind of square rectangular uh, form factor. And then we have our 99 watt uh, linear node um, next to that as well. And, and we've incorporated both of these uh, into the solution. And then down in the lower right, uh, we have a couple of the more uh, advanced devices as part of the solution. Uh, the, the people counter uh, uses a thermal camera uh, to detect uh, if anyone is in the room, um, as well as uh, providing a count of the number of people in the room. Um, and then we also have incorporated a couple of uh, uh, LCD touch screens into the solution uh, as to Dwight described at the end of his presentation about uh, for initiating and viewing the current status of the uh, disinfection cycle. And so uh, we can move on to the next slide with that and we'll look at a little bit of a layout. Uh, don't let the, uh, the spaghetti of this uh, overwhelm you. I'll, I'll kind of step you through uh, kind of what all is going on here. Uh, one, one key thing to, uh, to start off with is the, the blue cables uh, would be data only. Um, and so those are going from our gateway server down to a PoE switch, and then also an optional router uh, slash internet connection from there. Um, and the yellow cables um, are the PoE cables. So they're, they're carrying power and data uh, for the solution. And so on the, uh, the lower left side, um, we, we show the uh, four UVC fixtures being powered uh, by PoE um, and, and Igor nodes. And then over on the right, uh, we have some of our sensors and our inputs to the system. So uh, we've got our dual tech uh, motion sensor, uh, along with a touchscreen connected to uh, one of our linear nodes. And then daisy chained off of that, uh, we have a door contact sensor and a touchscreen. Um, and really everything uh, in here uh, is, is using standard CAT6, CAT6A, Ethernet uh, patch cables 
um, that are all provided as part of the Igor kit. Um, and so we, we really have a, a two-layer solution offering. Um, this is what we consider to be our, our better uh, option. And then we on the next slide, um, we'll show you a picture of our what we label as our, our best option. And, and so the, the key difference there is adding that people counter uh, that's mounted in room uh, for an additional layer of safety, an additional layer of, of detection um, for that solution. Um, and, and so as, as Dwight alluded to, um, that also brings a lot more uh, data and feedback to the table for the owner um, as, as far as from a, a social distancing standpoint, um, you know, in, ensuring that you are not, uh, you know, more people than should be are not, uh, you know, congregating um, in that particular room. Um, that, that added safety layer um, to ensure, you know, in, in say the case of a, a library or maybe a, a, a location where somebody, you know, maybe takes a nap, you know, and they're not moving much and, you know, they're not, uh, uh, you know, not alerted by the other, other features that we have in there to uh, alert the occupants to an upcoming disinfection cycle. Uh, the PIR sensor or the, the uh, PIR uh, thermal camera and the people counter uh, can uh, sense that person in the room and prevent the disinfection cycle from starting. So um, on the next slide, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see an example of a, a reflected ceiling plan. Um, this is uh, an example of a classroom, uh, about a 30 foot by 30 foot classroom, it's about 900 square feet, um, and, and the, the uh, overlapping coverage of the uh, four uh, UBC disinfection fixtures. Um, the center of the room, uh, you can see where we have the, the people sensor and an occupancy sensor mounted for kind of that uh, dual detection capabilities. Um, and down at the bottom right, uh, you can see where we have uh, touch screens mounted uh, both inside and outside of the room to give users feedback and allow them to initiate a disinfection cycle, um, along with a, a door contact sensor. So if someone uh, accidentally enters the room uh, while a, a cycle is, uh, is going on, then that would automatically uh, turn off the system or shut down that cycle um, until it was uh, reinitiated and uh, verified uh, unoccupied again. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll go on to the next slide. We've got uh, one, more, uh, one more example of, uh, say, a senior uh, living room, senior living center, um, and, and an example of how the fixtures and sensors would be laid out here. Uh, as you can see in the bathroom, uh, we do have an additional uh, occupancy sensor in there um, for, uh, for detection, um, again, for that, that extra uh, level of safety, uh, just ensuring that uh, there's no occupants in either of these spaces uh, when the disinfection cycle is is turned on. Um, but again, we have all of the same sensors and such from the previous slide, the people sensor, uh, central occupancy sensor, door sensor, and, and touch screens for controlling it and and uh, initiating it. Um, and then in the upper right, we, we show some of the uh, other equipment that was, co that was covered on previous slides that would uh, most likely be mounted uh, exterior to to the room um, and could be uh, controlling a, a group of rooms. So the, the gateway server, uh, potentially a, a Wi-Fi router, and then also a PoE switch. And, and so one of the key things about this solution is that it can be easily scaled and expanded. Um, really, we, we just need to add more PoE ports uh, as more rooms or larger rooms uh, need to be disinfected and such. And, and so um, as with a lot of our, our uh, PoE lighting solutions, um, you know, one standard gateway server uh, can uh, provide the control functionality uh, for a number of different rooms and, and large areas and such. So it's, it's primarily the, the fixtures, the sensors, and the, the PoE ports that would need to be increased as the size of the application scales. Uh, and so uh, with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jack and let him uh, dive into installation and commissioning. Well, thank you, Andrew. And uh, as you probably noticed, there's been a lot of thought, a lot of technology put into the solution. And But in the same breath, we want to have the overall solution to be easy to use and easy to install. And so Igor's approach is, is really one of a plug and play methodology for both installation and commissioning. Uh, everything you need for your system uh, comes in a box or in a, several boxes and is ready to work outside of that box helping take the guesswork out of the installation, you know, things like uh, network cables or any cables really uh, labeled and uh, predetermined lengths will be uh, provided, uh, quick connects for sensors and controls, uh, 
integral nodes to the fixtures so that it's really just plug and play there. Uh, gateway software preloaded and configured, uh, switches, routers, uh, anything that's required to, in order to communicate uh, it comes labeled and configured as well. And then of course, uh, important is uh, instructions and documentation for uh, any questions during the installation or even after. And so once all those components are uh, plugged in, really the only element that's missing is power. So, you know, you power on the pre-commissioned uh, gateway, uh, your pre-configured switch, your pre-configured router will come up. And really it's just about verifying and testing all the devices and really start disinfecting. So why did we take this approach? It's really about the ease of deployment. Uh, so, you know, think about traditional lighting. So traditional lighting, you obviously have a period of installation where you're hanging fixtures and then you come through and actually do the lighting controls uh, commissioning point. But uh, with Igor's approach with this solution, it's really about plug and play, meaning that everything in that box that we just talked about, uh, that Andrew articulated and that Dwight uh, showed from a technology standpoint, comes in that box pre-commissioned and ready. So once everything's plugged in, it's really, uh, you know, start disinfecting. So all of this prep work makes uh, for our partners, our system integrators, and even Igor Professional Services job very simple with very little issues to actually no issues. Uh, and of course, after the installation and the commissioning, uh, our technical services team, and even through that entire process, our technical service team, our development team, our sales team is all behind, uh, ready to help at any one point. And with that, I'm going to turn that back over to Kim. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so we intentionally tried to make sure that we, we shared as much information as possible about our product and then also left time for plenty of q and I see Jared has been pretty active in trying to answer some of those software questions as I have been as well. But man, we've got a lot of questions. So we're gonna do the best we can. Um, we have been consulting with people in the UVC lighting world pretty extensively, but we ourselves are not complete experts yet. So we'll do the best we can Anything we can't answer or say we'll get back to you on, um, we'll incorporate into an expanded FAQ section on our website here. So igortech.com slash UV. Um, our webinar will also be posted there for viewing. Once we have that up, it'll take us a couple of days. So have some patience, submit your questions. Um, we've got some time here. I'm gonna start with the most popular one from Lewis. He's asking if there's a third party lab that has validated the eradication of COVID-19 virus after an 80 minute cycle. If so, do the other certificates or anything. So, um, you know, have we been working with our lighting manufacturer? I'm not sure if Matt wants to take this or um, who might have been. Sure, I got it. Um... Yeah, so Lewis, thanks for the question. That's a great one. Um, there are a number of tests that are have been uh, that are underway right now or have been recently completed. Um, most of the documentation or, or education around the topic today goes around how UVC is effective against other coronaviruses such as SARS, right? And so what is um, up to this point, it's been associated that, hey, um, uh, COVID-19 is a form of a coronavirus as is SARS and therefore is effective. Um, what we will do is we, will, we can um, collate those studies as well as um, send you examples of studies that are underway right now. Great, thank you. Um, generally, questions about how do we verify the efficiency of the sanitization? Um, are there any sort of metrics to verify that you're hitting the right range? I think this might be, again, related to the specific light fixture as well. Um, yeah, I'll take a run at that one, too. So I think the, the question is, 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 how do we know if it's actually working? At least that's how I'm interpreting, which is also a great question. And so the way I like to answer that is kind of think about how do you know that the hand sanitizer is working? Or how do you know that the bleach that you sprayed on the surface is working? Um, the way you know is because studies have been done to show that this is the effectiveness of those goods. And so the number of studies have been done to say, hey, if I hit a surface or I hit air with this dosage and a dosage is a, is a function of power and distance and time, it, I can be this effective. And so that is how we know that, that it is effective. Um, as far as like, if you could, is there any way for you to measure it in the space, like real world? 
there's a couple of companies that make these little um, cards or dosometers or dosimeters um, and you can actually place those in the space and it'll say whether or not UV is hitting those those spaces within within the, uh, the, the work environment. Thank you. Um, questions about the idea of shadows. Um, so will this kill germs and viruses without direct exposure, such as under a bed? And how would you design to try to um, maximize the disinfection power in a room to avoid shadow problems? Andrew, you talked a little bit about design. Do you want to take that one first? Uh, let me make sure I'm off mute. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, you know, some of the examples that, that uh, we we gave uh, or I gave in my presentation were uh, based upon really the, the minimum coverage, um, you know, at, at the floor level. But uh, if, if you're really looking to reduce the number of shadow spots and, and such, then obviously you can increase the number of fixtures in the space um, and get more coverage under desks and, and other, uh, you know, beds or other surfaces and such. Um, you know, a, a, another aspect is, as part of our research into uh, UVC and, and how it's been used in the past, um, there, there have been other examples where um, really it's, it's been projected maybe more up at the ceiling and thus disinfecting the air as the air is circulated around the room. And so there's going to be that dual effect uh, with our solution of, of not just the surfaces that are in direct line of sight with the fixtures getting disinfected, but, but also the air as it is circulated through the room um, being disinfected. And so that will help get uh, more coverage in, uh, in some of those areas that uh, maybe uh, are, you know, are shadow spots. Yeah, let me add to that. So um, kind of my thought there are on shadows. Uh, so the way I equate to it is um, you're going to get a reduced effect with shadows, just like if you go to the beach and you're underneath an umbrella, um, there's UVA and UVB coming down from the sun, but you're, you're hidden from that to some extent from the umbrella. And so therefore you don't get as burn or you don't get as tan. Um, you are still getting some UVA and UVB, right? Because there is some reflection, but it's greatly reduced. As far as how do we design to deliver uh, the appropriate disinfection? Well, one is we started off with some very standard fixture types with this two by two uh, ceiling, uh, two by two fixture. So they can be deployed in numerous environments. We have other form factors that are available to us. And so what we would like to do is we built some prepackaged kits based around different room configurations. And then if you have very custom room configurations, let's say maybe it's a hotel, hotel um, uh, occupant room or a private restroom and, and I have some under cabinet areas, then we have other ways to do that as well. So there's just like normal lighting, there's all kinds of different form factors. Same thing goes for UVC lighting. Thank you. There's a question about the light itself again. Um, does the same troffer act as a standard light when not sanitizing? So while the version that we're launching with here today is, is strictly for UVC, what you're asking for is very doable and achievable. And so there's um, um, all kinds of ways for us to basically make a very um, advanced fixture that supports uh, maybe additional functions. So whether it be I want white light for normal ambient lighting, or maybe I want to also deploy um, a different nanometer of wavelength of light. So all that can be done. And that's the beauty of Igor's, Igor's system and our design is that we can power one with all low voltage. And then two, we have multiple channels of control. And so think of each channel as a different type of delivered light or delivered object type. All right, Rob is confirming here at 52 watts per fixture, it appears each fixture is a home run to the switch. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, that's correct. And then we, is there anything we need to take into account, um, just based on some questions here, is there anything to consider when talking about um, the ports or switches? Do you need anything special or special certifications? Jack or Andrew? Sorry, could, could you ask that question again? I, uh, I was. Yeah, um, the, it kind of bumped around here, but someone yeah. was asking about the actual, um, like the Cisco switch or whatever brand switch. Do you yeah. need a certain type? Um, will this run with both, you know, I guess, you know, the 100 watt standard and yeah. the lower standard 
Yeah. Generally, is there any consideration you need to think about when finding the right switch for this product? So I'll piggyback off of uh, Matt's answer is we've developed a couple of kits uh, that come functioning right out of the box that leverage a Cisco technology, but that doesn't preclude us from leveraging other compatible devices that Igor has certified that work. Yeah, and, and the beauty of the kit is that, you know, we're leveraging a tried and true plenum rated eight port network switch that requires no custom training, no custom skill set. Um, uh, you don't have to be an IT professional to deploy this system. So um, this has been asked in a few different ways, but Ray is asking, um, referencing the fact that universities and a lot of large companies are already utilizing iPads on outside of rooms. Can they incorporate some sort of app or use those current um, screens that they already have instead of installing a second touch screen? Yeah, I can take that one. So absolutely, if there are certain devices that you already have invested into and installed, then we can look at that. Uh, we want to, you know, every situation is different, unique. So we look at each one individually, understand uh, the requirements and what would be involved, and then we would uh, be able to propose something to accommodate that. But, you know, especially if you're doing a large rollout, you know, a upfront development effort could be much less than deploying, you know, thousands uh, of uh, additional touch screens. So uh, definitely understand and appreciate that question. And, you know, we're, well, by having our technology very modular and, and it's really an integration platform that it allows for uh, those kind of circumstances and more than happy to look at those with you. Great. Um, some quick questions about design. Is this, do we have an option for open ceilings and is there a maximum height that these lights should be placed? Um, the, the fixture is designed is really intended for uh, 12 feet or less right now. Um, and the reason that is, is because the, the, the diodes or the, uh, the UVC uh, output, right, that's a function of distance, time, and, and power or inten and, um, intensity. So as we get further away, we got to throw more power at it, which means I can either have more home runs or a different optic. So the, the point I'm saying is that while we might have the two by two for this application, and let's say you had um, a manufacturing environment or um, another type application, we could absolutely look at different fixture uh, aesthetics and fixture properties to work in those spaces. Okay, so Tony's wondering, is the people counter good for retail people counting of the type that's now required for a lot of COVID-19 social distancing? So kind of considering maybe all the applications, um, this is people counting, could it be helpful to retail environments? Um, oh yeah, no doubt. Um, I mean, literally there's applications for, so, you know, we talked about the hierarchical, hierarchical, our, I can't even say it right now. We talked about the multi-layered strategy, right? So whether it be hand sanitization or encouraging social distancing. So one of the things that solution does is encourage that social distancing because of the people counting, right? So it's, all we, we've taken these tried and true items, right? A door contact, a motion sensor, a switch, and a, and a UVC element to build just a better package, right? Any one of those things add their own value. We're just layering it all together to bring it, to make it even more powerful. All right, we've got a good example question here. So um, in a food processing plant, which might not have a ceiling um, in the, you know, the way that we've been talking, is there a way that we have a fixture or is there a fixture that could be, for example, hung from beams? Um, what might some solutions be for environments that are not in our standard kitted uh, solution? I'd say we would want to uh, talk with that client about the application to determine the best way to tackle their challenge. Um, it's There's so many different variables and things around lighting design and, and the way that we throw UV light and then power requirements, it is best just to speak with that client, look at their specific application, and then tailor something to meet their needs. Greg is wondering about our channel strategy or model. Um, so 
how essentially how would you purchase this through direct sales to end users or is it only through a certified dealer network yeah so um uh igor has a number of ways that we can be reached one is we have um, our, our direct igor team so reach out to us directly uh via the website email phone number whatever that is kim has placed a lot of that information on the microsite uh, and also on our website. So check that out. Um, other ways are we have Igor representatives in certain parts of the country. So you can reach out to those local folks. Um, reach out, you can also reach out to our certified resellers, our certified installers, as well as our, our distribution network. Multiple ways to get to us. Uh, best thing to do though, go to the website, contact us there. Um, is there any do you have any guidance on um, the warranty period on the UV luminaires? Um, and um, is that the same as the controls on the system? Yeah, the luminaire is designed to live uh, in a minimum of seven years based on a, um, a runtime of roughly two hours per day over those seven years. So the way that we measure and we can deliver uh, a warranty of, uh, of five years is that if we are able to monitor those systems, then we will certify that it is running appropriately and then we can honor and, uh, and support that warranty. So it's very key though that, that you limit run times enough because really you don't, you don't want to run it all the time. You want to run it what's right for the dosage to create a healthier work environment. And uh, the longer you run it, the quicker you'll shorten the life of it. Um, let's talk a little bit about the difference between retrofitting a space that already exists, which is probably a lot of the, where a lot of the interest is today versus a, a new build. Um, what, any special considerations to take into account when we talk with a retrofit and then, um, you know, what are the possibilities, uh, of using this in a new building, uh, coming up? I'm not sure, Dwight, if you wanted to start with that, and then maybe we could get Jack involved here with that question. But sort of that retrofit versus new build, uh, what, are, what are some things to consider? Yeah, this is probably a really good question for Jack because uh, he lives and breathes the install. But the system's been designed, once again, to be plug and play with Ethernet, class two, low voltage. Uh, so it's, it opens up the opportunity for the install to be done from a number of different trades, but also it's very non-invasive. Um, it doesn't, you know, some of this does have to go back to your AHJ uh, authority having jurisdiction as the building code, but nearly everywhere, uh, you know, this kind of cabling does not require being put into conduit and, and so forth. So it, it really makes it a very simple deployment, even in a retrofit. But Jack, I'll, I'll defer to you for no, I, I think you're exactly right. I mean, obviously, uh, we're designing this for uh, retrofit, but it works just as easily and probably even more. Uh, it's more conducive to new building. That way we have pretty much uh, free reign to be able to say, here's the placement, uh, optimal placement, um, and really design it from the, the start of the actual project versus a retrofit. Um, so I, I think there's, there are different considerations, obviously ceiling types, uh, you know, what type of labor can be used. And really that's where uh, Igor shines as far as uh, and Dwight hit, you know, the, the nail on the head. Our technology doesn't require any type of, uh, you know, electrician installing any type of conduit. It, it can be free fly in the actual ceiling itself. So uh, that's a real added value. And it really makes the retrofit uh, a perfect solution. Um, but uh, to me, it's, it's, it's easier to plan for it if it's a new building but we have the model in place for the retrofit as well. One thing I'd like to add really quick is that, you know, we're working very closely with a specific fixture manufacturer on this initial debut, but what we really want to spur here is, is an innovation uh, cycle with the fixture companies and, and to provide optionality and see optionality exist in, in the marketplace. So th there's a lot of different types of fixtures that ultimately uh, can be, you know, whether it's a linear, uh, troughers, uh, other surface mount fixtures and so forth. And there, there's going to be a lot of different use cases. And there's a reason why there's such a, a large industry of lighting fixture manufacturers and players out there is so that people can get the aesthetics and the form factors that they want. And we're just trying to jumpstart this uh, and get this uh, and get something out there 
that can start being utilized and as fast as possible. But we're also looking to uh, to work uh, with those fixture companies uh, as they bring out fixtures, uh, incorporate them into the solu solution offerings, and provide users and customers with more and more options. Thank you. Uh, Henry um, is wondering if they already have Igor technology installed in their facility, how easy is it to add this solution and these EVC lights? Really, this can be installed as, as an extension of the uh, existing solution. Um, you know, really depending on, you know, if you have the, uh, the POE uh, port and power capacity available, depending on how many rooms you want to add this to, uh, adding uh, the, uh, of course, the EVC fixtures and any additional sensors, um, and then the, the plug-in uh, at the gateway software level. Um, so really, you can leverage a, a lot of the existing installed infrastructure and just extend it to add this capability to your, uh, your installation. Um, there's a question here as well about, you know, what, what sort of information is available over API or BACnet for connecting to full building um, BAS uh, SCADA uh, systems? This is from Ian um, out in Ireland, so hi Ian. Yeah, hi Ian. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So this is on the same platform that you're used to, uh, built on Nexos. So you have the same robust API and security on that API. So you have, you know, a very comprehensive, open, secure API for basically anything that you want to do. In addition, there is a backnet service that we offer to be able to allow for not only controlling, but also receiving data from our system. So yeah, you can get that very robust uh, capability of, of seeing this, not as it, it can be deployed as a standalone, but it can also be deployed as part of a an existing control strategy uh, that you know this can link into your your uh, building automation or your security or whatever the case might be, uh, and, and provide you know a very comprehensive solution that ultimately can become with Nexos as the heart, it can really uh, become the beginning of a, a full IoT uh, infrastructure for your building. Um, there's been some questions about regulation, specifically whether UL is needed or um, what there might be coming or already exists in terms of UL certificates or um, ETL listed products. So uh, does anyone want to take a stab at talking about where we are, um, what UL, we need, you know, UL stance um, and, and whether or not that's needed for this, for this product. Yeah, sure. So uh, the Igor Nude is, is a, a UL listed product. And so the fixture that's attached to it is much like any other accessory, whether it be like a doorbell or a contact or a, like a, just, a, just an LED diode that's attached to it. So that, that node does carry the UL listing um, for this application. Has, um, has anyone heard about uh, See, I'm trying to, there's so many questions. A lot of them are about the lighting fixtures, styles, different types. Dwight already touched on that. So I'm just going to kind of move on to some of the other ones here. Um, can just to, to that point really quick, yeah. uh, you know, if there are manufacturers that are on, that are listening right now uh, that have UVC fixtures and, and they're interested in finding, uh, you know, using them in these solutions, uh, we'd love to, you know, reach out to us uh, and then we can incorporate those into our offering um, and, and also work with you and your channels in the, with this offering. So there's, um, you know, we're very much see this as a value add. We've always been a company that believes in value add and this being an ecosystem uh, of bringing the best uh, of breed devices and, and options and software and everything else to a the customers that exist out in the marketplace so that you really want the customers to win. And uh, that's the, the, us all working together and um, is the way that that happens. So uh, if, you know, I think having those options is really important uh, to the, to the customer success and for 
people to get what they want. Um, there's a question here, and I think perhaps, um, you know, if we don't have the answer, we can follow up on this. But um, Kevin's wondering about exposure to UV, which has been shown to have degrading effects on plastics and other synthetic materials. Um, just like we can all imagine how sunlight can over time discolor fabric. Um, is there anything in particular to, to consider with this? Um, is it different from maybe the other ones or what are we doing to potentially address that? I think one key item about that is um, these, these lights, these UVC lights aren't on uh, all day long. Um, you know, it's, it's really a, a much shorter period of time when they are running this, this disinfection um, and so that's going to limit uh, any rate of, of degradation and such, uh, whether they're you know, doing short 15 minute bursts um, or a, a 90 minute cycle uh, per day, um, that, that by itself is gonna limit the amount of exposure those services receive. Right. Um, Kevin, you wanna follow up on that? I think we're gonna start kind of wrapping up in terms of questions. Um, there's there's quite a bit in regards to sort of the design of this. What happens if there's sort of a weird space or if there's two doors um, and, and things like that, you know, uh, really there, there's sort of this reoccurring theme with everyone out there about safety. And we talked about that, um, but Mimi, is there any, anything you'd want to say to help reassure people that, you know, if you have two doors in a room or if you've got um, an odd shaped room that there, there's a way of utilizing this? Mm -hmm. So like, like the rest of the, the Igor Nexo solution, uh, we, we built in a ton of flexibility um, into this. So uh, whether there's, there's multiple doors, odd shapes, et cetera, you know, we, can, we can always add and design the system uh, for that, that full coverage, both from a disinfection and from a safety standpoint, uh, adding a, additional sensors to the room, additional door contacts, um, additional fixtures to make sure that, that uh, appropriate <clears throat> coverage is made. So it, it really fits in well uh, with the platform we've built and, and the flexibility of that. Yeah. And then um, maybe to sort of wrap it up from each speaker, I would just be interested in understanding, you know, what do you think is the coolest feature about this um, that you're most excited to see out there or the, the most, you know, maybe in the development of this product, what was something that was really fun to see come to fruition. Um, and I'd be interested in everyone's uh, answer here, but maybe we could start with um, uh, Andrew. I think you've been pretty involved. You were involved in a lot of the outlines of it. So we'll start with Andrew, but everyone's gonna answer generally, what are you excited about with this? Or, you know, talking about in the development of this, what was something that was really rewarding to, um, to overcome or, or to figure out in the process of making this happen? Sure, sure. You know, uh, my background is in electrical engineering, and and so I really love seeing how easy it was to uh, extend our product and extend the platform that we've you know spent years building uh, to an additional application like this, a, a really very specific uh, application, and it, and it really um, you know was it was fairly easy to add that functionality, add that logic to it. So. From an engineer nerd standpoint, uh, it's very cool to go through this process. Yeah, I'll go next. Um, so, kind of what I thought was the most exciting was when we saw um, the challenges in, in in the world starting to occur over in other markets, and then heading here to uh, North America, more specific to where I'm at, was we were able to to look at this and say, how can how can we, this Igor, this nimble company, make a quick difference, right? And so because it is all low voltage, it is a platform, and it is ultimately flexible, we were quickly able to really deliver um, a valuable system, right? And so it just shows that, that once you go to that digital infrastructure, how quickly you can evolve something to make a difference. And, um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's just been really fun to get to this point. Jack, go for it. 
I, well, I was going to say uh, almost the exact same thing as Matt. I, I mean, I remember just having initial conversations about this not too long ago and the speed at which we are able to move just uh, speaks volumes towards our product and our people. So to me, that's the most exciting piece is really having the people, the talent and the technology really come together and solve a, a urgent need. So. I'll always do Jared and then Dwight. Yeah, so I, you know, I'll echo what everyone else says, um, and obviously I'm probably a little bit biased um, as well. But the ability to rapidly approach different problems, uh, you know, this is just one part of our solution uh, among many other things. But to constantly be able to add new value um, incrementally, or you know, like Dwight used, likes to say, in Lego pieces. Uh, is is really great, um, and it does speak volumes to our team that we have here, and and how fast we can uh, crank these features out. It's really great. I guess I'm up next. So, well, I I would have to say a couple things. Uh, one is the founder to get to this point where not only the technology is like Lego pieces. Finally, you know, it takes a long time to finally you know be walking the walk that. You know, it, it, so it's such an incredible proud moment in that regard to see how the technology can come together and form a turnkey solution. Uh, and, and really, this is just the beginning uh, of creating many solutions that can be created just as easily. So it, it, it's really an, an amazing time at Igor. But then at the same time, I echo what Jack said uh, in that we have just an amazing group of people where, I mean, just on this webinar, you see so many faces, you see so many people speaking in, with deep expertise and, and knowledge and, and taking ownership of certain parts of the project and the delivery of, you know, delivering this amazing uh, experiences to customers that I'm very proud of uh, everyone here at, at Igor. So uh, this is going to, I'm very happy that our first solution uh, that, we're really talking about here is something that's an immediate, very important problem uh, that we're helping solve in the world right now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you all um, to all the speakers today for your time. And thank you to everyone who attended today. Um, this, is, this is, as we all said, this is very, it's exciting because it has purpose and it can be very useful. Um, you know, COVID cases continue to rise in the world, and this is not just a COVID solution. It can help with those influenza outbreaks that happen every winter. We're so excited to have something that can make our spaces better for everybody.